In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the sun's pretty bright today, so I'm changing the angle of my position so I'm not completely washed out in the brightness of the sun. <laughs> Can there be any other bread? Well, of course, that depends on who you ask. Yes, it is true. I love bread. Just look at my bread basket. <laughs> That's the proof, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? I have tried all sorts of bread. White bread, brown bread, of course, whole wheat, rye bread, sourdough bread, harvest bread, malt bread, Mavis's bread. Remember that? Hot cross buns, cinnamon buns, Chelsea buns, pita bread, tortillas, breadsticks, and my new favorite bread, Calabrese from Metro. I am sure that you all have your own favorite bread. My absolute favorite bread, which I lament that I will never taste again, even though I have tried to find an equal, was a sourdough bread that I had when I was at the College of Preachers in Washington, D.C. at the National Cathedral. I was there for a week, and I was in bread heaven. Everybody loved that bread. There were no pieces untaken from the basket. It was only served at dinner, and we just couldn't wait. I went back the next year, and the same cook was there, and so was the bread. I went back two years later after that, and the cook had changed and I had never had a sourdough bread as good as that one ever again. Oh. They say that bread is the staff of life, meaning we cannot live without bread. Bread is a main part of our daily food. Well, mine anyways. It is appropriate that bread is mentioned as significant, and important in both the Old and the New Testaments of Scripture. In the Exodus story for today, bread is the answer to the hunger prayers of the people of Israel. But it is also clear that the people of Israel just might be looking for something more. Sometimes in our lives, we may not be satisfied with the status quo. And we may want something more. We may find ourselves saying something like the people of Israel when they say, what's this? <laughs> this isn't bread. And Moses says, this is the new bread. Everything that happens in that story relates to the way things used to be compared to the way they are now or what they might become. And it is clear that the people needed to be set free from Egypt's grasp, but it is also clear that they had their fill to eat at the flesh pots by the fire where they sat and ate in Egypt when they were slaves to Pharaoh. When life changes and things are not the way they used to be, we might lament and pine for the good old days when Life was sweeter. But was it really? We do grumble and complain sometimes for the way things are now because we may not be able to see that where we are now is only part of the journey to get to us to where we are going, which hopefully will be to the place of our heart's desire. So maybe the question is, can we ever be satisfied? Of course, for the Israelites, Moses, through God's blessing, gives them everything that they need to be satisfied. Bread in the morning, quail is meat for the night, to satisfy their hunger and water to drink that will quench their thirst. Now, what about the gospel for today? Where is their bread in that story? Well, quite simply, the bread is the wages 
that each of the workers will receive, and there cannot be any more bread or any different bread than the bread that is offered to both those who work for the whole day or just part of the day or even for only an hour. The wage is the same. Why? Because there is no higher wage to be given. There is no better bread. There is no more bread than what is offered to every one of the workers or, if you will, for every follower of Jesus, past, present, or future. And that wage or bread is eternal life in the love of God's kingdom. Sometimes we say this, breaking of the bread proclamation, on a Sunday morning, moments before we all receive communion. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. For us as Christians, there can be only one, Jesus the Christ, the one who gave his body, the one who gave his blood for the sake of the whole world. Jesus' body is his own free choice, his own self-sacrifice, his own gift of grace and offering for the healing of the whole world. We all belong to the same God and to the same Savior, to the same unity, one body, one spirit, one Lord. There can be no more and there can be no less than what there already is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, my friends, this most recognizable scripture verse says the world, everyone, including the people that we do not like or that we do not think are worthy that we never thought would ever belong to God's kingdom through God's grace, love, and mercy. Remember, healing is for the sick. Forgiveness is for the broken. And hope is for the brokenhearted, right? How can we complain or grumble or be jealous or envious because God is generous? God's grace, God's love, God's mercy far surpasses anything that I could ever think of. The reward and blessing of God is the same. The wage is the same. The bread is the same. The love is is the same. God's love is God's love. Jesus' sacrifice is Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus is the new bread which has come down from heaven to satisfy our spiritual hunger. So my friends, let us rejoice in the gift of God's love through Jesus Christ our Lord, the one true bread of heaven. And by the way, it's the best bread that I've ever tasted. Amen? Amen.